Now, Russia has called on Ukraine to halt its attempts to retake towns and cities in the east of the country, now partly controlled by pro-Russian separatists, and return to negotiations. There's been fierce fighting in Slovyansk. Four Ukrainian soldiers are reported killed and 30 injured. A Ukrainian helicopter has been shot down. Ukraine has accused Russia of planning to destroy Ukraine and encouraging separatists in Odessa, where more than 40 people, mostly pro-Russians, were killed on Friday. Well, our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, reports. Explosions and gunfire around Slovyansk this morning. A Russian TV team films Ukrainian troops as they try to push out pro-Russian rebels who control the town. One of the Ukrainian soldiers was injured here. Inside Slovyansk, the rebels were using the most unlikely transport, but they have the support of the people. Gunmen took up positions ready to repel Ukrainian forces coming in from the outskirts. This is scrappy guerrilla fighting. Injured rebels waited for first aid and were sped away in an ambulance. More were wounded just outside of town in the village of Semenyovka, where rebels fought off the government assault. It looks like he's dying. We gave him first aid. We'll pray that he survives. Civilians are reported to have got caught up in the fighting as well as the militia. We were on our way out of town and were forced back when we heard gunshots. There was heavy gunfire in Semyonovka. Peaceful citizens died. But no one won and no one lost. The government has as yet failed to retake Slovyansk. In Odessa, another problem for the Ukrainian authorities. Pro-Russian supporters brought tributes to the trades union building, where 36 of their number were asphyxiated or burnt to death after clashes with a pro-Ukrainian protest on Friday. The police did almost nothing. The Ukrainian government is still fighting on the battlefield, but in many ways, this shows how much they've already lost. It's not just that the pro-Russian group in Odessa is turning this into a shrine to their martyrs, fueling grief and anger, but it shows that the authorities in Kiev have lost control. Many here now hope for the overthrow of the Ukrainian government with its Western backers. Now we have to get rid of the fascists and bandits because you in Europe support them. You Europeans are traitors. You don't want this at your home, but you will tolerate it here. You declare sanctions against Russia. Why? You organized all this. Today, people traipse through the charred building. Unable to rely on the police here, the government has now sent a special police battalion from Kiev, including civilian activists. They can count on the extreme nationalist right sector, which has fought pro-Russian supporters in Odessa. So we don't go into attack first. We, we just respond for, for attack. But you're prepared for that? Uh, one of my friends said that uh, we need to, uh, to hope for better, but uh, prepare for the worst. The first of more than 40 funerals for those killed in Odessa on Friday. Vyacheslav Markin was a city councillor who opposed the new authorities in Kiev. The coming days will see more grief and anger as the government battles to restore its authority across the south and east of Ukraine. So, Krishnan, the Ukrainian government is really struggling on two fronts now. If they lose Odessa, that's tremendously important. It's their last Black Sea port. Remember, they've already lost Crimea with the Black Sea coast. So if they lose Odessa, they become a landlocked country. And it really is on a knife edge here. They don't have much authority left. And Slovyansk today, we saw some of the most fierce fighting so far in this, in this struggle. William Haig, the Foreign Secretary, is due in Kiev later this week. It's hard to know what he has to offer. He'll give his support to the government, encourage them to hold elections on May the 25th. Is that realistic? It's becoming very difficult to imagine that it is.
here in the east and the south of Ukraine. Thanks, Lindsay.